And Nicole Brady sat down with the head of Colorado's Republican Party to get his take on this fighting and where the party is headed here in the Centennial State. Jeff Hayes, the chair of the state Republican Party, joining me now. Thanks for being here, Jeff. It's an honor. Thank you very much for having me. You've been on the job since April 1st. That's right. Uh, no really? irony. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, a lot has happened. This has been a huge year for democracy, for Republicans especially. And we want to talk a little bit about the infighting that's been happening in the party in Washington just this past week. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What's happening with the National Republican Party and how that impacts the party here as well? Well, it's probably a mosaic of personalities, of policies, of ambition. I mean, all those things always come to the nexus in politics. Mm -hmm. It does cascade down because a lot of people pay attention to national politics. And so one of my challenges is to differentiate between our impact. And that's the things we try to control, the things we have control over. We're focused on the governor's race. We're focused on other statewide elected officials. We're focused on maintaining um, our majority in the Senate, trying to flip the House, supporting as many candidates as we can. So, you know, my message as the party chairman for the state uh, party of Colorado is that we can't necessarily control what happens to the Arizona senators or the um, Alaska senators or the decisions that they make. We focus on the things that we have a little bit of authority on. We're trying to do the best job we can on and those. And we'll talk about the specifics here in Colorado just shortly here because you're right, that's very important uh, and more important. But it's interesting when you see these senators from Arizona or Tennessee coming after the president. You wonder, is it, is it bad for the party to have people on different pages, or is it okay to have dissenting voices and, and different opinions out there? I think it's bad when it seems so personality focused. If there were more policy issues, I think that people would accept that as uh, being kind of the normal part of governance. You know, uh -huh. these are important decisions, people have different perspectives, but it just looks like it's infighting and silliness, and people are frankly a little bit disgusted with that uh, from my perspective. So talk about the Colorado Republicans. I mean, what is, what is your main mission right now? Not just to get people elected, but are there certain policies you're focused on here in the state? Well, the party apparatus is not really a policy organization. Mm -hmm. The people that I talk to that have a military background, they understand that my job is to organize, train, and equip. And so we're very aggressively recruiting volunteers. We're giving them proper training so that they feel confident and that they're competent when they're out there doing their work. Uh, we're providing them with tools, whether it's data, or walk applications, uh, you know, and again, trying to recruit those volunteers and support as many candidates as we can. We're trying to be a comprehensive, full-service organization, not only to our candidates, but also to our county party, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the county party chairman. We've got 64 major teammates out there yeah. for the 64 counties, and so that's a big job. Absolutely, and, and a lot of different local races. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor's race, of course, is the one of the big focuses. Oh, the yes. biggest, yes. It's the bright, shiny uh -huh. object. And it really is important because the gubernatorial candidate tends to drag other people along with them, um, you know, kind of basking in the reflected glory. Or if it's not a very well-run campaign, it can affect a lot of downstream races. So, uh, you know, we've got a holy host of, <laughs> of uh, yeah, candidates, candidates right now. Uh -huh. And uh, we're doing everything we can to support them fairly, equitably, but thoroughly. Uh, we, we are... Um, you know, deeply engaged with all those campaigns. And because the party doesn't put a thumb on the scale, we are uh, unbiased and objective. And my deep belief is if we have a good, um, you know, a fairly run mm -hmm. process and we have a level playing field that's fairly officiated, then the voters will decide who they want to represent them and we'll have the best candidate. So you guys have a huge field, as you said, mm -hmm. of Republicans uh, running for governor right now. Um, as that gets closer to election date, do things change? As you said, you won't support one candidate until the, the primary is over. Right. But what happens around that time? Well, I, I anticipate it getting more intense. Mm -hmm. These people have their emotions, their families, their fortunes engaged in these, a lot of supporters. And so um, part of my job is to help them stay focused on their campaigns. Uh, I don't think that any candidate really has the... Well, I don't want them to burn the party down in their effort to gain the, the gubernatorial right. candidacy by destroying other people's reputations and things like that. I, it's naive to think that we're going to keep it all positive, uh -huh. again, because this is a very competitive game. But I hope that uh, our voters will respond to dignity and positivity mm. and policy issues and not personal attacks, because uh, we'll get the government we deserve. Interesting. 
Over the years, we've seen a rise in independent voters around the country and here in Colorado, certainly. They're a large number of the voting population now. And I grew up here and, and know that we always had kind of the, the areas of Boulder and Denver that were highly right. Democrat and the rural areas that were very Republican. And it, it was truly a purple state. Uh, what is the state of, of the Republican Party in Colorado right now in terms of the power that it has and, and the number of voters here? Well, when you look at the uh, county commissioner seats, mm -hmm. we've got a really healthy hold on that. We've got uh, good representation at the state and national level. We've got, at the state um, legislature, we have a one-vote majority in the Senate right now. Uh, we have Republicans in all, in three of the four uh, statewide elected officials. So it really is purple. You know, the governor is obviously a Democrat. The House is Democrat. Um, do you think it works well that way, uh, having a, a mix? Oh, no. I think okay. it needs to be all Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> do you work well together, though? Do you think that the Republicans here do a good job of reaching across the aisle? I don't think so. Mm. And it's not us. I think yeah. it's both parties. Sure. In our electoral systems tend to drive extremes, for example, in the caucus and assembly processes. Those are the hyper-interested activist groups on Democrat and Republican sides. And so candidates sometimes have to run uh, to be either hyper-conservative or hyper-liberal, mm -hmm. and that it makes it very difficult to tack toward the middle to reach compromise solutions when they're in the House, because we have other entities that are tracking their votes on both sides, mm -hmm. and boy, if you're one bubble off plum, you may get pilloried in the, in the primary. So it makes it a challenge to actually govern. Um, systems do matter. Yeah. You know, uh, Coach DeBerry, my old boss, used to say, you get what you emphasize and you get what you tolerate. And so if you are driving certain behaviors to get to the office, um, you're going to get more of that. Hmm. I want to thank you, Jeff Hayes, chair of the Republican Party for the state of Colorado. Best of luck in well, uh, this big year coming up. All right. Thanks. Anne.